Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can conduct qualitative research and thematic analysis using text network visualization in combination with uh, GPT-4 and ChatGPT AI. So that in the end, you will get a graph like this, like what you see here, which enables you to quickly visually identify the patterns and the themes that are contained inside the text. And this is why the graph is so useful because uh, we're very good as human beings in identifying patterns and graph representation is really useful for that because we can directly see what those patterns are, what the terms are, how they're connected, and we can also find out some interesting things that would not be so obvious if we just looked at the tables because most of the other tools, they produce tables and lists. And in Frenodus, it has tables also, which are available in the stats, but it also represents ideas visually so you can see how they're connected and what are the main themes. So in the end, you will get a visualization that shows you what the main topics are, how they connect to each other. You would also be able to zoom in and to click on uh, some of the terms. So for example, let's say here, and see in which context they're used. So how people are actually talking about these specific items. And you will also be able to identify the structural gaps in the discourse. So uh, the connections and themes that are missing here uh, that enable you to then see how you could generate some interesting ideas and solutions to the problems that you would not see otherwise. So if you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching and I will demonstrate the basic workflow for that. So first of all, you need to import the data and you can do that in the apps import page. Then you can choose many different sources. Here I'm going to import files and you could import a, a text file. You could also just copy and paste your text. You could also analyze an audio transcript. In this case, I'm going to import a spreadsheet, a CSV file. I'm going to choose that file. These are the answers of uh, data scientists to a survey that was, that was conducted by Kaggle where they talked about the problems they experience in their personal projects. So I'm going to take that file with the free form responses and I'm going to select the column that I'm going to analyze. Here it's only one column with the responses. If I had another column I could analyze several of them or I could use that column for categorization so that if it was an age bracket for example or gender I could then later filter the graph by the parameters. Right? But here I'm only going to choose the answers. And then what happens here is when I click on process Infranotus is going to visualize this text, these responses as a graph where the words or the terms that I used in the graph are the nodes and the connections uh, represent co-occurrences of those words in the same context. So for example, if someone used, let's say, uh, cleaning data in the same context, like here, when I click on the statement, I can see it highlighted in the graph, uh, then they will be connected together. Then the words that tend to occur together more often will form topical clusters and like, like this one for instance. So you can see which words tend to uh, be used in the same context uh, and have semantic proximity in the context of this particular document. So this becomes very interesting because you can really quickly see patterns in this graph. Something that you would not be able to uncover so easily with the standard tables. The first thing that I like to do when I visualize a graph is to remove the things that I don't need. So a little bit of cleaning. Uh, and here I know that almost every answer mentions data and data set. I don't need that. So I'm going to select these nodes and then I'm going to hide them from the graph to reveal the context around them. So here it's much more interesting because I can already see many, many more interesting terms that pop up. Maybe lot is not an important word, so I'm also going to hide it. Okay, now I have a very good representation. The first thing that I do is just looking at the graph to see if I can find some interesting concepts uh, that are important for me. So I know that these responses are about the problems that people experience. And directly when I look at the graph, I see that they talk a lot about time, work, project, and they do that in the same context because those terms, they have the same color and they're next to each other on the graph. So this is one topic. Then they talk a lot about a lack of documentation which is incomplete so you can see uh, visually I identify those patterns and themes very quickly and then finding and find sets so they they have a problem here finding sets of data so as you can see directly I can 
uh, uncover those insights just visually looking at the graph. We're not even using the AI yet. If I want, I can write down those insights into the uh, special panel here where I can write down things. So for example, I can say that uh, people experience problems in, uh, with uh, the quality of data and documentation. Another one, finding the right data sets and finding time to work on a project. So these are just some insights I got from looking at the graph. I can save them uh, for later use. So these are my project notes or if you're using qualitative analysis software, when you code and you annotate data, this is kind of the same feature. You can annotate your graph using these project notes here. Okay, once I visualize these ideas, I can get a little bit more precise and look at the analytics. So this would be my next step. First, I look at the graph, then I look at the analytics. By the way, if at any point of time you need help with this workflow, you can just open it here and you have a complete workflow listed here. So if you complete one step, you can uh, click mark as complete and then go on further. So the next uh, uh, proposal that the system gives me is to reveal high level ideas. Uh, this uses GPT-3 AI to identify the names for this topic. So as you can see, the graph identified some topical clusters or themes that exist in this document. And I can interpret them myself just by looking at the words that are contained in them. Or I can also reveal high level ideas. So they will be sent to GPT-3. I can click here or on this button here. And then those topics are sent to GPT-3 and it generates names for them. So to help me interpret what they're about. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. I can also show all the topics if I click here. But for now, I'll just keep at these four to make it easier. And as you can see, documentation quality is the main problem. The second one is the project work. The third one is, is data matching or finding data and data access. So it's kind of uh, congruent with the insights I wrote. I will say also here documentation, documentation, quality and I'll just use the terms that uh, AI identified because this is pretty interesting for me. So I'll we'll say project work and data matching and data access. So I'm kind of uh, enriching my insights using the AI and this is why I like to look at the graph first and to do the analysis myself because I don't want the AI to do the job for me. I also don't trust it when I'm analyzing responses of real people. I don't want it to be too generic. So this is why I'll do the job myself first and then use the AI to help me think about some things I might have missed out. All right, so this would be the approach to take here. Then the next step is to, you know, look into the specific topics. So for example, documentation quality, let's see what it's about. I can click on the topic and here I have a few options. When I click on it, automatically it filters out uh, the statements that belong to this topic. So I can either read through those statements manually, which is something that people also like to do. I can also see, uh, you know, in the graph, what are the nodes used there? So I can see that there is something about finding the data in the right domain, uh, detail of data, missing data, and so on. So the advantage of Infranodus is that you zoom into this topic and then you find something that you, you think is interesting. And by the way, not only what you think is interesting, but also what's highlighted as a bigger node on the graph, which means it has higher importance in this discourse. So it's a kind of like a combination of qualitative and also quantitative research, right? Because you're using numerical data to visualize them differently. So for example, here I see documentation, okay, dictionary, missing, quality. I click on those terms, they're connected, they're used in the same context a lot, and then I can see only the statements and it shows me that it's exactly 3% of the statements, so 111 of them that contain these terms, so it's very precise, and I can see all the statements that contain this uh, notion of missing documentation and the quality of data. So. At this point, I can either, you know, read through those ideas or another really powerful feature is that I can go into relations and I can ask the system to generate uh, a summary from visible statements. So those statements here, it's going to use 
GPT-3 or GPT-4 if you select it to summarize them. I can also do the same here, summarize visible statements. Okay, so I summarize visible statements and what happens now is that it's going to come up with a summary of all the statements uh, that contain these uh, notions of documentation quality, missing dictionary and so on. So I can either read through it myself or use the AI to provide these insights for me. As you can imagine, it has to analyze through quite a lot of data. And this is why it takes a moment, but here it says that the text discusses issues with data sets such as poor data quality, lack of documentation, missing data points, lack of granularity and incorrect documentation. And also the format of the data can be unclear and so on. As you can see, in just a few seconds, we got an insight about 111 different statements that talk about documentation quality. This is really powerful. We can save it into our project notes by clicking this button here and it's going to be automatically added into our insights about this data set. Yeah, I can close this window, move on further. I can actually regenerate more insights uh, if I want to. I can close this window. By the way, I can always open it again and generate some new insights. So if you ever need the help of AI, you can also do it through here. Now that I have generated some insights about this topic, I can zoom out and go into some other topic. So for example, here, project work. So this seems a little bit unclear to me what this is about. Again, I can select some nodes and explore in which context they're used to understand it a little bit better. Or I can also use summarize selected topics feature here uh, and it's going to send it to the AI and then uh, provide a sort of summary of what this is talking about. And you actually have several approaches uh, on this because uh, in this case, if you, if you use this button, it's going to summarize the actual keywords found here. But if you want to summarize uh, the actual statements, then you would use this feature, summarize visible statements here on the left, okay? So here it says that uh, it's about the size of the project and how it's a challenge to work on something big because those data scientists are talking about their personal challenges and this is perhaps one of them. So this is why uh, they mention it. We save this insight into the graph and move on. Okay, so now I understand that this project work cluster was mainly talking about uh, the difficulty to undertake a big project on your own. Okay, so we visualize this. We can move on and explore more topics. Okay, then one other thing that I wanted to show you is the Gap Insights feature. And this is a really powerful feature because it analyzes the structure of the network and then it shows you what's missing from the graph. So here, I can uh, reset the highlight and highlight it in the network and then reiterate through a few different topics to ask GPT-3 to identify uh, what are those topics and how they could be better connected. So for example, here we have a gap between data cleaning, which is a problem, and machine learning. And if we have this gap, then we can visualize very easily uh, some different ideas that we could use to connect it. So for example, here, uh, what would be the connection between data cleaning and machine learning? This is a question that we can ask ourselves. We see that people are talking about data cleaning as one problem and their problem with machine learning as another problem. So we can think, okay, maybe they don't have enough data to, for, for machine learning projects. And by the way, Infranodus automatically selects two most suitable statements that describe this topic. So you can also read them and kind of try to analyze them. Or you can also use the uh, bridge the gap feature, which uses AI to generate a connection between those two clusters and to explain to you what this connection could mean. So here, how can machine learning algorithms be applied to pre-processing required for formatting data and understanding the features for suitable analysis and learning? So this is great because it tells us exactly uh, how those two problems are connected and the question that we should ask ourselves to solve this problem. So if we were working on a product or on some kind of policy, uh, we could actually use this question to then develop an idea from it. I say question because of course you can also change the module here and come up with a direct response that would link those ideas together. So for example, I can also use uh, uh, GPT-4 and then usually it's going to try to come up with a sort of response that would link uh, those two clusters together. If I don't need a question, but I already need a need an answer. Okay, so uh, there you could kind of like approach it in several different ways um, and it depends on whether you want to proactively research your data or if you just want to get some insights as quick as possible. 
here I exceeded my quote a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, just wait a little bit and then it's gonna be reset. So here again, I will generate uh, the connection for this gap. And we will see what, how is machine learning and data cleaning can be connected with the help of GPT-4 if it works, because sometimes um, it's uh, not fully functional because too many people are using it. Okay, so if in this case, if this happens, it's great, it happens in the demo. You can always click develop, and then what's gonna happen here is that it will use GPT-3, which is usually much more accessible and generate a response. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, it summarizes these ideas and the connections between them. Okay, great. So you could generate the connection based on your own insight or use uh, uh, GPT-3 AI to generate a connection for you. Then you can reset the highlight and also reset the topics shown. And one last thing I wanted to show you are the discourse connector points. And this is very interesting because it basically identifies the most influential terms in the network uh, that have high influence, but not so many connections. And these are usually really good entrance points into the discourse. What it means is that they are relevant, but they are not burdened by too many connections. So if you try to think of how to connect to this discourse, these would be the perfect terms. You can select them and then see what they are, documentation incomplete, finding big, big public set, and then you can click generate content and the built-in AI will generate some idea that tries to link all those terms together in an interesting way. And here it says, uh, by finding incomplete public documentation of big sets of work, we can set ourselves up for success in finding the necessary information to complete our tasks. Okay, so this, uh, this proposition of finding documentation for big sets and how it sets us apart from the others. We can also generate more responses. Uh, here it says that working with incomplete documentation can be a big challenge in finding and setting up work, which also means that if we provide some kind of solution that would uh, solve this problem for users, then we might provide a very interesting service. So as you can see, based on these problematics, we're already discovering some nice insights. We can also try to use GPT-4 Again, I don't know if it's going to work now, and maybe it's going to come up with uh, some solution again. So let's see. Uh, and again, you know, uh, the way that you would use this feature is just reiterate constantly through the ideas it gives you until you find something you like, or just read it yourselves here in the analytics panel and try to think uh, here. Yeah, it comes up about with an idea of uh, incomplete documentation quality and missing format. Uh, how it's problematic and how it then makes it difficult to find the right model. So again, these problematics of uh, data for machine learning and how it's important to provide some solution for that. We could save it into the notes and move on to the next ideas. So this is how you would perform this analysis. First of all, looking at the graph, finding some interesting topics inside, zooming in, looking into the specific connections between ideas, finding the actual statements that contain those ideas, summarizing them using this feature here that summarizes visual statements for you using the AI, then zooming out, jumping to some other ideas, uh, exploring them, writing down your notes in the project notes here, and then at some point, once you're done with analyzing the patterns and themes in the data, going to gap insights, revealing the gaps, reiterating through them and trying to find how you can connect them in interesting ways and using AI to generate those connections for you. And finally, those discourse connector points that reveal uh, interesting points of entry into this discourse that kind of show you how you could embed your ideas into a certain discourse by touching upon the topics that are important but not so frequent so that they would have some sort of bandwidth uh, for you to go through. This is how it would work. Feel free to try it out on infranodus.com. I will also link to a detailed tutorial uh, in the description to this video so you can follow it step by step. And I will be curious to hear your ideas on uh, how it works, your feedback, and if you have also any suggestions or questions, let me know in the comments or through our support portal. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy using Infranodus.